Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bikes. I'm your friend Amadon Saktivel. In this video, we will see about how we can use supplier interface implementations um, in our test automation framework. Right? We have seen about the consumer interface in the previous videos. If you haven't watched them, please do watch them. Uh, that gives you uh, sound basics. So continue with this. Good. So some player is a very very simple interface that has only one abstract method called as get that doesn't return anything but it supplies a value right so 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 it returns something but it, the method signature does not accept any parameters to it right it doesn't have any uh, default methods it does not have any by types like by supplier because a method can return only one return right return type right so there is no by type as well so it's a very very simple interface we want to see about that in detail and uh, we'll also see what is lazy evaluation how we can perform this using lambdas right so this is one of the very important advantage of using uh, lambda expressions in java uh, apart from writing a precise and concise code, uh, more readable code, this is a very important, uh, you know, uh, functionality that we fail to notice pretty often, right? So we'll also see so, some use cases where we can use the supply interface implementation with, with certain assertion libraries and also in our test automation framework, like your explicit weight messages and factory method design pattern. Again, guys, if you don't understand any of this, that's okay. Um, we'll, we're going to see that about in detail in, in, the, in the coming video, right? So without wasting much time, uh, let me switch back to my Eclipse workspace, right? So let me go to the supplier uh, interface. So we notice this is a functional interface. The generic type while declaring, we need to declare the generic type. This T can be anything. It can be your integer, it can be a string, it can be your custom classes like employee class, your student class, something like that. It doesn't accept any arguments, but it returns uh, something, right? It can be anything. It's a very, very simple uh, functional interface. And one of the important rule is there is no requirement that it needs to return a new thing every time. Okay. Uh, suppose a supplier, uh, a Lambda can return always hello world. Okay. There is no need that it has to do, uh, supply different, different things and different, different times when it called. Okay. So this is a very simple, uh, 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 you know, misconception though. So the Java developers try to put it here, right? So let's try to use it in our code and then we'll see, right? Okay, let's let's try to use um, um, uh, let's say supplier, and uh, I want to uh, supply a double value every time someone is calling me, right? So let's name it as supplier, and I can give um, let's let's first import it, control plus one, and then import from Java .util function, and here the method signature is nothing; it it doesn't accept anything, but it returns something. So since the, I can return, um, let's say uh, math dot random, all right? This is returning your double, okay? So the return type is double as well. So the, from the method signature, from the method signature, it understand it doesn't accept anything, but it returns something, right? The return type is T. In our case, the return type is double, right? It, it returns every time you call this, it returns a unique uh, random value every time, right? So to use this in our code, you just need to use a, a supplier and then the method name is get, just call this. So if you notice, when I, when I notice it is supplying you double, right? That's that's the important things because we have de declared the generic type as double, right? So let's try to run this. Uh, so can, and then press on J to run it. Okay, or just run as, sorry guys, I need to run it as J unit because I have uh, imported from J unit. Okay, so if you notice it has ran this and then it printed a value. Good, so what else we can do? Suppose let's assume I want to return uh, a specific string every time. Okay, so maybe uh, I name it as string supplier, right? And then here, instead of that, I can just return a string every time it is called, right? Hello world, right? Every time someone is calling me, I'm gonna return a hello world, but don't forget the uh, method parenthesis as well, right? So if I call this again, and this time I'm gonna use string supplier, right? Let's try to run it. And this time it's returning me hello world. Every time you call this method, it will return 
every time it will return hello world but this one will return you random value every time so the return returning value can be anything right it can be constant sometimes or it can be random sometimes good so the same way you can return anything right you can return an employee class as well so this is a very simple use case that we can do right so now you can ask me one doubt okay amudan if this only purpose is to return something then i can create a method something like this okay public void uh, get hello world okay sorry uh, public string get hello world and return every time is calling you hello i will return hello world you can have something like this why i have to use a supplier here this is when the lazy evaluation comes into picture guys this is something that is uh, very often unnoticed but i am trying to cover this right i can create something like this and call this get hello world every time it will work but let's try to understand what is um, lazy evaluation how this can help us to improve the performance right guys if you feel the video a little slow please change the playback settings to 1.5 or 2 okay let's let's try to uh, understand with using a j unit assertion okay let's try to use uh, assertions i am not using test ng guys there are functionality of uh, that is not available in test ng where it accepts uh, supplier as an argument so i am using j unit assertion if you notice the import statement here it's j unit jupyter dot api test okay i want to assert uh, assert equals okay i am trying to assert something see there are overloaded methods but the same overloaded method i have to pass a string message suppose there is a failure okay let's assume i i am comparing um, one and two and then if there is a failure what i want to do uh, uh, it failed something like this i can give my custom message right custom message so if i try to run the test now right so it, it is giving me the custom message if you notice this is giving me the custom message except expected one but was two so this was the thing we can use like this but if you notice closely they also have one more argument okay let me also create a new one if you notice uh, let's go a little bit down and if you notice there is something called a supplier of string okay so you are trying to compare byte or you know your string or character whatever it is there is something called a supplier of string so you, the basically what we have seen here in the 13th line supplier of string string supplier right so you you can pass this what is the advantage of using this okay that's what i'm trying to cover in this particular video so i am again trying to comp compare one and two but this time instead of directly passing the message like this okay i can pass the message as a lambda hey amudan what is the use of this both will work but what is the use that is what we going to understand in few seconds okay there is a reason behind why they have given like this see expected one but was two okay so since it was failed at this particular step it didn't executed this uh, let me try to run it again so it is it's again you know constructing the custom message and printing us for printing it for us good so i am trying to tell what is the advantage of using this okay to do that let me go to a test runner again i have created some methods here right it's very simple so i want to my ultimate goal is i want to check whether the number is divisible by 2 that is is even number as well as it is also divisible by 10 my my methods are very simple so if it is divisible by 10 i am just comparing um, you know i am just doing the calculation i modulus 10 equal to equal to 0 if it is divisible by 10 it will return true if it is divisible by 2 i am just comparing um, i modulus 2 equal to equal to 0 if both of them are true i want that to print the compute method want to print it as true that's it i just want to see whether it it satisfy both the condition whether it is divisible by 2 and divisible by 10 so there are there is a small case here so if you notice this compute method is accepting boolean two booleans so whether it is even and whether it is divisible by 10 so i'm just returning it so it will print the values so it's a very simple use case okay let's let's try to run this as a java application this time if you notice it is executing in division in div by 10 method it is div by uh, two two method and also it is printing me false because the phi is phi is uh, not divisible by 2 right so 
So that's one of the use case. Let's try to put it as four here. Okay. Run as Java application. So it's it's you know both the times it is evaluating both the conditions. Correct. So it's very simple. It goes. It check. It does this operation. It does this operation. It comes and then also do the computing and then print this. Right. So it is doing every time. It is checking all these things. Okay. Now I have also altered this in such a way that the compute method here, instead of accepting a boolean itself, it accepts supplier of boolean. Right. So okay. The is divisible by ten. Same thing. I am just checking whether i modulus is ten equal to equal to zero. Is even i modulus two equal to equal to zero. But here, if you notice, this method is accepting a boolean, supplier of boolean, right? And then I am calling even dot get divisible by ten dot get. Okay. Now, if I try to run the test now, run as Java application. There is one small change. If you notice, indivisible by two method is alone executed. Why the indivisible by ten method is not executed? Because this compute operation, compute operation, if one of them is false, there is no need to execute the other one. So your your lambda expression is lazily evaluated, and it 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 doesn't have the opportunity to execute itself. So it 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 doesn't run this particular, or it doesn't call this method. That's the reason you get to see uh, only one. That is in div by two method, right? The same way, if I change this to six, and then if I change this to, you know, fourteen or something that is not available, then run as uh, Java application will give me see in div by two method, in div by ten method, false. Because the first one is satisfying this, so it has the necessity to evaluate this, right? So, so, so this will lazily evaluate your stuff, right? That is very important. Which, guys, it may seem a very small thing, but imagine we are not, we are neglecting a method call itself. So, imagine this method is doing a lot of things. Okay, here it is doing very simple things. So, a method call will not consume a lot of time. But if a method, like say, assume you are reading it from reading from DB, or you are you are calling some APIs, getting the response, you are passing the response, doing a lot of operations, right? If it is expensive operation, you can use Lambda to save your time, right? Good. So enough of this. Let's try to see how we can use this in our actual code, right? So what I have done, I have launched my Chrome, and then I am telling, uh, I am waiting for the element to be clickable. Uh, I am launching the Google, so the Google search bar, uh, the locator is uh, name is Q. I am sending the keys as testing many bytes, right? If I try to run this particular test, uh, it'll work. Okay, it's a very very simple test. So well, now what I am going to do if I change this to Q one two, but that particular locator is not available there. Let's try to see what's the exception it's throwing. So we have to wait for the results, and uh, it will throw the error after waiting for ten seconds. So you notice it is telling waiting for the element to be clickable in uh, you know by that name Q one two. Again, if you have an option to override this particular error, okay, if you don't like that error to be seen, you can you can customize your own error, right? How to do that? So we notice uh, dodge here. If you notice um, with so with message, you can directly give the message or with message of supplier of string. So here you can pass, okay. I can pass my own custom implementation. Um, that is custom custom message, right? For time being, I'm giving custom message. But in your case, you can give uh, what is the actual error. So it was waiting for the element to be clickable at this particular point. It was failing because of an overlay. You want to add any other information? You, you can do that, right? And then if I try to run the test now, so this message will be lazily evaluated and will only be executed. If there is a failure, okay. Otherwise, it won't get even evaluated, okay. In the in the normal case, if you directly pass a string, it will be evaluated. So it, the only advantage is it will be lazily evaluated. Again, guys, we will see more advantages of using this uh, supplier interface in test automation in the upcoming video. Uh, until then, um, try to buy away from Mugen. I'll see you in another great video. Bye.